In the sprawling deserts of the United Arab Emirates, there are huge areas of greenery emerging amidst the golden sands. This transformation is not some natural phenomenon, but it's by design. It's called desert greening. And for all the UAE's opulence, this may be its most valuable investment yet. The United Nations estimated that by 2025, 1.8 billion people will be living with absolute water scarcity. If you don't have water for people, animals, plant communities, as a nation, you will really struggle, especially in desert countries. Increasingly, lack of water due to climate change is resulting in less secure water. And the Middle East is home to 12 of the 17 world's most water-stressed countries. The UAE receives less than 200 millimeters of rainfall each year. To put that into context, London soaked up an average of 1,051 millimeters of rain in 2022, while Singapore drenched in a whopping 3,012 millimeters during the same year. So as one can imagine, ensuring enough water for the UAE's population is a real challenge. To continue to support its increasing development and growing population, the UAE government invested more than $20 million in research to start a process called cloud seeding. Cloud seeding enhance the rain in the cloud. The main objective of that to increase the storage of the groundwater. Uh, it was a direct order from His Highness uh, Sheikh Mansour. When did this start? It was late to 2000 and uh, early uh, 2001. We were uh, partner with the National Atmospheric Research in the United States. The entire Gulf region could face a 50% reduction in water availability per capita by 2050. The UAE has tried to combat desertification, which is a land that is no longer productive because it can't support plant growth. The Emirates spans over 83,000 square kilometers and around 80% is desert. It's estimated that 75% of our planet's land is already degraded. These lands have become deserts or are uninhabitable. About 12 million hectares of land is lost around the world each year as a direct consequence of drought and desertification. The World Bank estimates the Emirates has lost almost 33,000 hectares of land from 2002 to 2018. So the decrease in arable land is primarily due to land degradation. So this impacts over 3 billion people. And People that live in desert and dry land ecosystems that cover nearly half of the globe are particularly vulnerable to um, the loss of arable land and land degradation. But in the last 50 years, what was once a large desert and a tranquil fishing port has evolved into an urban metropolis. Long before skyscrapers and bustling cities, the UAE had a history of planting trees in areas that lacked them, a process called afforestation. What we're seeing across the world, and especially some of the countries that have significant desert systems, is efforts to green the desert, which means bringing in trees, other plant communities, to increase, as the initiatives say, the greenness of the deserts. Take a look at these satellite images of the UAE in the 1980s and present day. The country's late president sought to provide permanent homes for nomadic Bedouins in the parched desert. His dreams set the stage for a nation's ambitious endeavor, and their leaders knew that trees could help with the fight against desertification. About two decades ago, the One Million Trees Initiative was announced by the ruler of Dubai. The plan was to plant 250,000 trees every year, in collaboration with the Dubai Police Academy. It wasn't long before groves of olives, palms, and the resilient ghafs, the national tree of the UAE, painted the once empty land with life. When you are planting some of those trees, you can um, dig different holes to capture water and engineer the landscape so those trees that you're bringing in will be able to survive. And so that's critically important is that it's not only the types of trees that you're bringing in or in the types of plants you're bringing in for these afforestation projects, but also how you engineer the landscape to be able to receive those plants and that they are able to survive. A tree nursery for the One Million Trees initiative was created, spanning more than 130,000 square meters. But challenges loomed large over green dreams. Behold, Mall of the World, a mega shopping center project. It was said that Dubai Holding, the investment vehicle of the Emirates ruler, would require $6.8 billion to build that entertainment district. Could you guess where they wanted to build this mega project? None other than the very land the tree nursery once thrived. 
And just like that, the project fell through and thousands of trees withered away and died. But in January 2015, the UAE cabinet approved the UAE Green Agenda for 2030, aimed at building a green economy. Plants are this a miracle worker in terms of pulling carbon dioxide. So you see a lot of engineering approaches to think about how we pull greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. But plants by themselves are one of the best tools that we have. The UAE is not alone in its quest to green the desert. Other countries like China have followed the same path, as seen in a desert called Kubuchi, in the country's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. In 1988, a Chinese company partnered with the Beijing government to build solar farms and other renewable energy projects. Three decades later, and one-third of Kubuchi is green, preventing dunes from enroaching on farms. The United Nations Environment Programme estimated the Kubuchi project cost $1.8 billion over 50 years. Beijing is a proponent of cloud seeding technology. They used it to manipulate weather, to protect farming areas, and to guarantee clear skies for key events. The UAE performs around 1,000 hours of cloud seeding to enhance rainfall in just one year, and it's all controlled in this building, the National Center of Meteorology in Abu Dhabi, where they track the whole process. We met with a cloud seeding expert to explain how the seeding process works. We wait the forecast when we have a good you know, chance for, for cloud. We send the aircraft to that location. It go uh, under the cloud in the first stage of the cloud. The, there is good updraft at that time. Start to release all the salt and with the good updraft, of course, it will go inside the cloud and uh, start to condensate and uh, the droplets will become bigger and start to uh, rain. The center manufactures a salt substance that helps enhance rainfall. They put them in what they call flares. Operation 219. Uh, we also spoke to one of the weather forecasters. He explains how the operations work. We align our uh, pilots to be on the airports and tell them when to be at the airport. So as expected, we wait for the clouds to appear on the radar. And there we have, we have our uh, pilots talking to us. Let me know if there is a, any updrafts in your area. This is a sample plane here at the National Center of Meteorology, but the real planes fly out from the runways in Al Ain. We have around 110 automatic weather stations. It gives us uh, data, like meteorological data, uh, every 15 minutes. The information on the screen tracks wind, speed, and direction, while satellite imagery monitors clouds to track fog and dust. Anything passing over the country, you can see it from the satellite, especially like the clouds. And this is the map of the UAE. But is the UAE seeing results from their efforts over the years to create a greener country? So we have different ways of either increase the water or save the water. We have, you know, the desalination we have, using a plantation that doesn't uh, take much water. There are many ways. One of the ways is cloud seeding. Is there any in terms of more greenery around the UAE because of cloud seeding efforts? So UAE is expanding on the agriculture and also we were expanding too much before. We have to do a plantation with study. Plantation costs a lot of water. We can control this water and not to use it as a waste. According to the World Bank, climate-related water scarcity will cost the region up to 6% of the GDP by 2050. As we green landscapes, this results in healthier people, not only healthier landscapes. Greening landscapes impacts the well-being, the mental health of people, the physical health of people in terms of air that they're breathing. In a region expected to be most impacted by warming temperatures, the time has never been more important than now to find alternative ways of maintaining life in the desert.